Hey friends, welcome to Living in His Purpose podcast, where we recognize that in God's purpose, He has the perfect spot for you. If you're a Christian woman and you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious by this rat race way of life and you're ready to find simplicity God's way, you're in the right spot. By replacing negative mindsets and habits with God's word, we're going to give Holy Spirit permission to come in and help us walk bravely in this upside down world. These are not easy things to face, sweet friend. You're going to have to put on your big girl pants. So pull them up, grab a drink, and let's get going. I have come to believe through what I'm learning in scripture, what God has laid on my heart, that God has given us answers to all of our problems, not just how to deal with them, but how to live out his purpose abundantly in our lives while going through our problems. Jesus says the world is full of trouble, but don't worry. He has overcome the world. It's past tense. He's already done it. And I've decided to take this literally and believe him. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm here today to encourage you to take God at his word. When he says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, that we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, we have to make the decision to take him literally. Somehow, He has designed us with this ability because he doesn't lie and he loves us. So today we're going to look at what ability we have in our spirits, in our souls, in our bodies to take thoughts captive and change our attitudes or our mindsets. I do believe that God created me with certain interests, gifts, callings, and purpose, just like everyone else. But one of these interests that I have has been, how does the body work? And having been in the medical field for over 30 years now, I've learned the body is a miraculous creation. And God has a sense of humor, he has mystery, and he has love. And he has great pleasure in watching us unfold the knowledge of how we are made. Now, working in the NICU, the newborn ICU, I have the utmost appreciation and privilege to see how our bodies are made right from the beginning. And just a side note, it's a true miracle that any of us made it out. So we're going to spend some time today talking about what thoughts are, what mindsets are, and how they relate to us in our souls, our spirits, and our body. And just to remind you, our souls, that is where our personality is, where our will is, where everything that is about us is. Our body is our physical body, and our spirits is the part of us that can commune with God. In the last 40 years, there has been wonderful new discoveries about the power of our thoughts. And the best part of learning about all of this sciencey stuff is that true science always aligns to God's word. And that's what makes me so excited to learn about it and to tell you about it. When God says we can take our thoughts captive, it isn't some ethereal pie in the sky abstract event it's real. It's something that happens here in our time and our space as it is happening in the spiritual realm. It's physically happening to us. So he has given us this insight that we can actually take our thoughts captive. In Romans 12 2, God tells us he will transform us by the renewing of our mind. In the New Living Translation says by changing the way you think. And a book that's thousands of years old is way ahead of our advanced, quote unquote, scientific community, as you're about to learn. And that makes me love him even more. And I'm praying that seeing the practicality of these Bible verses and many others are going to change your life literally. I have learned that everything has been given to me through his word and he never lies. His word is truth. He showed me that all things are possible, even when it comes to the work of changing my thoughts, my mindsets, my whole way of thinking. The verse taking your thoughts captive has real power in that. And so I'm choosing to believe it. In my life coach walk, I have learned that before I'm able to help others, I have to know what's inside of myself. And God has been so faithful to me when I asked him to show me a concise way that I could help other Christian women realize that he has given them power to change their mindset. And it's all in his word right there waiting for us to start willingly wanting to change our minds to be more like him. Everything we face, and many times things we don't face but think we will face, begins 
in our minds. This is where the battleground is. This is where the work starts. I'm going to have you do something for me. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you aren't, close your eyes while I count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Okay, you can open your eyes now. We can live three weeks without food, three days without water, three minutes without oxygen, but we can't live three seconds without thinking. How many of you in those three seconds didn't think about anything at all? I would venture to say there's not one of you that did that. Okay, so let me take a minute or two to define some things. First, our thoughts. Thoughts are made up of memories. Memories are the details of the thoughts. A thought is made from experiences that we've had. We have experiences of all kinds from the time we wake up until we go to bed each day until we take our last breath. It is our mind that takes hold of these experiences, filters them, and stores them in our brain and every cell of our body. Okay, now let's pause and define some things here. I want to define our mind versus our brain, okay, because they are two different things. A lot of what you see in scientific literature doesn't separate out these two things. What this has done is it's created a lot of confusion and a lot of issues with scientists incorrectly telling us that our brains are the problem. And they're not taking into consideration how God has made us. They're leaving out the spiritual and human part of us and boiling it down to just the physical aspect of our personhood. But that's not how we're made. We're made mostly made up of our minds. And this is part of what I call our souls. This is here we have our emotions, our perceptions, our free will, our thoughts. It's who we are. It is not our brain. Our brain is an organ that's inside your body. It's a part of our body. Our mind can affect our brain and it actually does affect our brain and our bodies and who we are. It's important that you understand that fundamental truth. Okay, so back to thoughts. A thought is a real physical thing. It takes up real space in your real brain, in your real body. A thought is like a tree. It's an idea, a concept, but inside our thoughts, there are memories. There can be thousands of memories in one thought, just like there are hundreds or even thousands of branches on a tree. And we have three types of memories. We have informational memories like facts and data. We have emotional memories. We have physical memories. These are the sensations experienced at the time that that thought was built. And these physical memories are built into every cell in our body. So when we recall the information, and the feeling of those memories, we re-experience even the physicalness of the memories. I hope that makes sense. So how many thoughts do we have in a day? Well, scientists have learned that the number of thoughts we have are potentially limitless because each thought can be made up of limitless memories. Our thoughts, they keep getting updated and they entangle with other related thoughts and their root systems become like a huge forest. And your mind is always in action. So remember those three seconds that I counted? Your mind was going many, many places in just three seconds. We're always building thoughts. We're always pulling up the thoughts we've had in the past to decide how we're going to walk forward. Think about how much information we're being exposed to in one moment of time. What we see, what we hear, what we feel, what we perceive. So we're always adding new memories to our already existing thoughts. So back to the question, how many thoughts do we th actually think in a day? Well, it's complicated, but here's your answer. Every 10 seconds, we have a conscious event where you realize what you've just been thinking about. All the little random thoughts that are popping into your conscious mind. So every minute we have six of these cycles. Every hour we have 360. Every 24 hours we have 8,460. These are all events where we become aware of what we've been thinking about. And that's all on your conscious level, the very top level. When we look at our non-conscious level, it's a whole other story. It becomes even more incredible. Now, if we're taking our thoughts from external signals and internal thoughts together, we have an estimated 16 to 18,000 thoughts each day. And God has given us the power to renew our mind, change our mindset thousands of times a day. Okay, so let's define mindsets. A mindset is the way you think and feel about things. 
this influences how you see the world and how you react to situations. It shapes your attitudes and decisions, affecting your thoughts, emotions, and actions. People can have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Mindsets can be positive or negative and play a really big role in how you learn, grow, and handle life's challenges. Thoughts are the building blocks of your mindsets. Repeated thoughts shape your mindsets. Positive thoughts like, I can learn from this, they strengthen a growth mindset. Negative thoughts like, this will never change, strengthen a fixed mindset. So let's look at a thought and how it's mapped out in our minds. Okay, so like a tree, our thoughts have branches, leaves, a trunk, and its roots. The branches and leaves are how you express your memories on a conscious level. And here, you're fully aware. Your choices and your behaviors are all located in your conscious mind. The tree trunk is your subconscious mind, which is where your perspective of the world lies, where we receive our physical and emotional experiences in life, like joy, anticipation, anxiety, depression. The subconscious mind connects the non-conscious to the conscience in the same way that the trunk is going to connect the roots to the leaves and the branches. The subconscious receives information from the non-conscious mind as this information is making its way up the tree to the conscious mind. So the roots of the tree represent your non-conscious mind. They are the origin of all the information, the origin of your emotional and physical memories. The non-conscious mind tells us what's going on in our lives and why we're doing what we're doing. It mixes and matches all the information that's coming in with what we already know to make sense of the world. The non-conscious mind is hungry for change, learning, looking to grow, and this is where wisdom lies. It hates chaos. It's a storehouse of energy just waiting to be sent to that conscious mind to move us into action. In this non-conscious mind, this thinking occurs at about 1 million actions per second. Did you hear that? 1 million actions per second. That is so fast. And it's really energy. And it's the energy. It's operating so fast. They have to use quantum physics to measure it, to measure how the information is being moved. The non-conscious mind is constantly communicating with our subconscious and our conscious mind trying to help us operate at a higher level. And it does this through dreams, feelings of angst, anxiety, anger, happiness. It's always trying to restore our equilibrium. And it does this by sending high energy, healthy or toxic thoughts to the subconscious mind to be sorted through and sorted out. That's why the non-conscious mind is the level we have to tap into to make changes in our lifestyle, our thoughts, our mindsets. Our non-conscious mind never shuts off. It is on 24-7. It doesn't matter what's going on. Now, just like a seed, when it's planted, when its roots are formed and the plant itself pops out of the ground, it changes into a new thing. And I want you to think about this analogy as you're thinking about our thoughts. They grow and they change over time. Once a thought is planted, the conversations you hear, what you read, what you discuss, it's going to cause that root to grow. And if we water these trees, these thoughts grow. But if we ignore them, whether good or bad, that little tree or that thought, it's going to die. So when we're looking at the branches and the leaves of this thought, we're looking at our behaviors and our emotions on a conscious level. When we go a little deeper into our subconscious mind, we're looking at our perspective or our mindset. We're looking at how our mind is in action. And we start tuning into our emotional and physical warning signals that we experience at the subconscious level. This is where anxiety is. This is where depression is. And even sometimes physical manifestations like aching muscles are. The trunk of the tree is our subconscious. It's giving us warning signals about toxic thoughts. So when we stop and we heed these warning signs that are occurring in the subconscious mind, we can learn how to go deeper into this non-conscious mind to see the origin of this information, to see how the root of these thoughts have been built, to see what thought needs to be taken captive and the exciting thing I have to share with you all today is that you can change those thoughts and mindsets that are having a negative effect in your life 
Changing your thoughts brings you out of victimhood. Now, I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking. It's more than that. It's getting to the root, the cellular level, if you will, of what you're holding on to in your memories and your thoughts. The toxic thoughts and mindsets, they are not our destiny. They are things that we have experienced, things we have thought about, things we have felt, but we can change that when we self-regulate, when we manage our mind, when we take our thoughts captive. We can prune and shape and rebuild those toxic, toxic thoughts into healthy ones. Now, back to our non-conscious mind. This is where all the action's happening. <laughs> this is where you take your thoughts captive, but it takes time deliberate thinking, meditating, prayer, the word of God, the work of Holy Spirit. Now, science calls it neuroplasticity. God calls it renewing your mind. Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. In Ephesians 4, 23, 24, we read, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. The attitudes here can also be called mindsets. Our perceptions of how we see the world, how we deal with what we see, are through our mindsets. And this work as a believer is done in you through Holy Spirit. Now in Romans 8, 6, God says this, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So God has wired us for peace and life. But we live in a broken world and we wear this bag of flesh that's full of sinful desires. But God loves us so much. He doesn't leave us in this state. He offered hope and salvation when he died on that cross. And by our faith, we now have the hope that as we trust him as Lord and Savior, and one of my favorite verses that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but one of love and power and sound judgment. We have the power to not be overwhelmed by our thoughts and emotions, to not be ruled by them. We have the power to pull them out and objectively in the light, look at them and see if what they're saying is truth. So you remember me saying that the non-conscious mind is always looking for harmony to take the chaos out of our minds. I believe this is what Holy Spirit is doing in a believer's mind. It's on that very deep level, pushing up thoughts through the subconscious mind into our conscious mind to be dealt with. Because Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Your thoughts do not own you. Your thoughts are there. And you can choose to deepen the root of that thought by going over and over it again, or you can let it go and not build that tree. And when you do have a thought, you can choose to make it positive or negative. Inevitably, you are choosing which way that tree will grow. So what's happening then in this changing state, this neuroplasticity state? Our thoughts toxic or not, are being pushed up into our conscious mind to be examined for truth and righteousness. And when they, these thoughts come up to the conscious level, they become malleable, changeable. Scientifically, the structure of the thought weakens and the proteins fall apart and the thought loses its root system. This is not only something that's happening in our mind, but is physically happening in our brains. Now, neurons are the cells in our brains where our thoughts are in the physical state. When we quit going over and over our negative events in our minds, these neurons in our brains, they start firing cattywankas. The connections between them start falling apart and the emotions attached to those negative events or traumas are destroyed. There are chemicals in our brains that start flowing around the traumatic thoughts and they weaken these thoughts even more. And eventually what happens is that the neurons become disconnected. They lose connections and they stop firing altogether. And once that happens, then you can start rebuilding new connections in their place. We can renew our minds spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And we have the ability to do this because in his ultimate wisdom, God gave us free will. Okay, 
So let's bring this down to a practical application. This may be like a lot and maybe you need to listen to this episode again, but it's really powerful to understand that you, with the help of Holy Spirit, have power to change what and how you're thinking. It's real. It's a physical thing that's happening in your brain with the power of your mind. Okay, so here we have two problems that we're going to have to overcome to learn how to effectively take our thoughts captive. First, we need to be aware and confident in the truth of God. Our world says there is no real truth. Truth is what we say it is. And that, my friends, is straight from the mouth of Satan. (laughs) Do you know the first thing ever recorded in the Bible that was spoken by the serpent? And he's been saying it to us ever since then. He's said, did God really say? He said it to Eve and got her to completely forget about the holiness of God, the ramifications of the truth that God had set before Adam and Eve. God told them, if you eat from this tree, you shall surely die. The truth was, yes, what God said would happen to them, did happen to them. They died. They didn't cling to the truth of God. So if you're at a place in your life where you're tired of being overwhelmed, anxious, depressed, chaotic, over busy, feeling unloved, uncertain, and misunderstood, and you're ready to start a real walk with God, you're going to have to sit with yourself and decide some basic truths. Now, I did this back in my 20s when I went through the lowest part of my life when I lost custody of my daughter. I had to choose back then how I was going to live my life. If I was going to stay in that depressed, helpless victim mentality, or if I was going to trust God. And I'm going to share with you the truths I decided to cling to. Now, there are words. There are words that I'm going to say to you, but there's power in these truths And I can promise you that because these are the truths I've been holding on to in my darkest hours of angst and depression that I have gone through over my whole life, okay? So listen and pick your own. They don't have to be these, but think about what truths that you're going to decide to hold on to. But here's a few of mine. God is who he says he is. God will do what he says he will do. God's word is is the ultimate truth. I am who God says I am. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is love and he loves me. His forgiveness is real and tangible. His sacrificial blood has made me whole and has brought me unashamedly into the presence of the Father. Everything else I've learned and that I'm going to learn are based on these truths. You need to define your own. That's where it's going to start. You have to have that baseline of truth. The second problem we have to overcome in this is this idea that if I have identified the solution to my problem, then I have solved my problem. (laughs) Now, as much as I would like that to be true, (laughs) it's not. (laughs) So what I'm talking about is instant satisfaction. Now, I am a big fan of one and done. Get it done in a hurry. Please and thank you. I have many other things to do. And that's why this taking my thoughts captive has been difficult for me. It takes time deliberation. For example, you know how on Sunday the sermon sounds so life-changing, so inspiring, but by Thursday you have forgotten what was even preached on, let alone is it making an impact on your life. And that's because we didn't think on those thoughts at a meaningful level of awareness. We did not ponder the thoughts. We drove by them at the speed of light. Well, taking your thoughts captive is not a one and done. In fact, science shows it takes 63 days of active mind work to change our thoughts, anchor new habits, and renew our mind. I don't have time to get into the science behind that number, and maybe I will for a future episode, but I wish I could. But if you want more detailed information on all of what I'm talking about, I would recommend looking into Dr. Caroline Leaf. Um, She has several books on the science behind taking your thoughts captive and how we can change our brains literally. And it's really, really good information. But today I'm going to share with you my simple and humble process to take your thoughts captive. I've mentioned it before and it's called the DAISY method. So I created this tool from a place of self-reflection. It's a process I've used once I started to become intentional with what I was thinking and feeling. But until I started my life coaching, I never put it down into words. And 
One thing you need to know about me is I love daisies. They're simple and sweet and can be any color of the rainbow. And back when I was creating my business and figuring out my branding, I looked at the meaning of different flowers and the daisy means new beginnings. And when I was starting my business, it and often since then, it seemed so appropriate to me. So I choose to put daisies on everything and it makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so I've talked about the daisy tool before and we're going to look at it to help us become focused, intentional, self-regulating thinkers. It's going to help us get in tune with our subconscious mind, which is going to lead us into deeper into our non-conscious mind, which if you remember is where the actual changing of our thoughts occur. In this place, we can see the roots of the toxic thoughts, the thoughts that are making us emotionally, mentally, and even physically sick. And drawing out this, these thoughts is how we deal with them. Now, through my DAISY method, we are reconceptualizing negative thoughts. We're not putting aside our negative thoughts and adding positive ones. We are taking these negative thoughts captive, making them obedient to Christ, and that takes change not replacement. And this is what I mentioned earlier. It really happens when you take your thoughts and you become intentional on them. You break down the proteins that are holding these thoughts together and you can change them. You can adapt them. You can put a new spin on them, make them a new thing. It's possible. Now with practice, it is completely possible to redesign your memories in a less painful, more manageable way. Okay, so in the DAISY method, the letter D stands for define or describe. And this is where you're going to write out your troubling thoughts, emotion, mindset, imagination. It's going to be your most time consuming of the exercise. And I would recommend narrowing it down to one very specific thought or emotion, mindset or imagination. It's going to require intentionality, reflection, insight, and a willingness to dig deeper than it might be comfortable doing. But in order to capture the roots of these thoughts, you have to be specific on what it even is. It might present as an emotion, a thought, or even a physical feeling. You may have to trace your thoughts through time to get to the root of it. And this can be hard and even scary. So I recommend to start with prayer, asking God to guard your heart against uncontrollable emotions as you dig into the issue that's keeping you up at night. Now, if you are a sufferer of traumatic events and this becomes too much, then you need to stop and maybe you need to get some outside help for you to deal with these thoughts. The letter A is for asking God in prayer to show you his truth about your situation. And this is going to require some humility. It's going to require you to trust that God will answer your prayer. And this can be a really, really hard thing. But remember, he is for you not against you. So here are five factors that I'd like you to consider that can hinder our prayer life. First, we can have unconfessed sin. We can have lack of faith. We can have wrong motives. We can be have unforgiveness. We can have disobedience. And once we work through these issues, we can be assured that God hears and will answer our prayers. And here's a simple way that kids are taught to pray to God. And maybe it'll help you stay focused in your quiet time to know what to pray for. You use the pray as an acronym. P is for praise. Praise God for everything he's done in your life. R is for repent. Ask for forgiveness for anything separating you from him. A is for ask. Be specific and ask, for, ask him for what's in your heart. Y is for yield. Allow God to work in your life by giving up anything that's hindering his work in your life. Okay, back to Daisy. The I is for getting in the word of God. Purposefully put yourself in a quiet place where you can read and listen for what God is saying to you in this moment about this topic. And if you aren't even sure of what the thought is that you need help with, it's completely fine. We in our society in this day and age do not practice mindfulness near enough. So it's going to take, it may take some time. Meditating on the word is mentioned often in the Bible and I believe for a good reason. Here's a few verses of what God says about meditating in the word. Joshua 1 9 says that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate it on it day and night. 
Psalm 1, 1 and 2 said, Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So when we meditate on the word, and we're not just reading the word, we're able to digest it more thoroughly. We activate the deeper parts of our mind where we are wanting the change to happen. We get into that non-conscious mind where the roots of our thoughts are. I'll have to remind you here that sometimes God does not reveal his will or his direction immediately. In fact, I would venture to say he would have you come back to him multiple times about the same issue. And what this does is this helps cause you to rely on him more. It's going to draw you closer to him, which is really the best place to be in this life. I believe that in our non-conscious mind, our spirit is communicating with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to quickly review my thoughts on how we are made in the image of God. I have a whole podcast issue on this topic if you're interested, but here it is in a nutshell. We are made of body, soul, and spirit. This is called the trichotomy view. We are created in the image of God in three parts. Our body is the physical, and it is a lot of what we've been talking about today. Our soul is made up of our personality, our intelligence, our mindset, our imagination, and our will. It's our essence of who we are. And then... We have a spirit. However, the spirit only comes alive when a person becomes a Christian. Because remember what was proclaimed to Adam and Eve. Because they ate from the tree of life, they would die. Now let me remind you, it wasn't a physical death. Because if they had been allowed to stay in the garden, they would have lived forever by eating from the tree of life. So it had to be something else. Death is the eternal separation from God. And when we become a Christian, we are rejoined with God. And this makes your spirit come alive. Paul states this truth in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Okay, back to Daisy. <laughs> the S is where we say to our spirit, rise up and lead my soul to remember the word. The spirit is what is connected to God, the Holy Spirit. Our spirit knows the truth knows the word, and holds on to what God is telling us. Now, over here in our soul, where our thoughts, our mindsets, imaginations, our will is, that is still conflicted in the flesh. We have to remember our soul daily that now I am a Christian. It isn't the boss of me anymore. My spirit is. In my spirit is all the goodness that God is revealing to me. These revelations are occurring at a deeper level in our minds, both spiritually and physically. We have to be aware that we possess this knowledge and power. It's not some secret knowledge. It's the gift of God. It is where his mercy and love and grace are. It is God's power. It is the power of his word. And every once in a while, or every lots in a while, we have to call out to our spirit to teach our soul, to remind our soul that all things are possible with God. Remind us that we have full access to God's arsenal to battle the enemy of our souls. To remind our souls it's safe and good to trust in the Lord. Now here's where you're going to apply the bottom line truths you have declared over your life. Our soul is selfish and weak and whiny. Our spirit is selfless, strong in the Lord, and self-disciplined. It possesses all of the gifts of the spirit, including self-control. The walk of sanctification means our souls are becoming more like Christ each and every day. And it is our spirit who is in communion with Holy Spirit that can remind us of our purpose in life. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8 multiple times that letting our sinful nature control our minds leads to death. But letting the spirit control our minds leads to life and peace. Because we belong to him, we have the power of the life-giving spirit to free us from the power of sin that leads to death. This sin and death is found in our toxic thoughts. That's why 2 Corinthians 10.5 isn't just acknowledging these false arguments, but capturing the rebellious thoughts and making them obedient to Christ. And the super cool thing for me to see is that science can measure and observe our minds and our brains taking our thoughts captive, tearing down these negative thoughts and mindsets, completely destroying them so we can rebuild them and make them a new thought that is obedient to Christ. Back to the Daisy Method. And lastly, we have our letter Y. This stands for yielding our troubled thought. 
It's very easy to say we want change and we want to let go of the hurt, but what we do doesn't always align with these desires, which is called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance can be explained this way. It's when what a person believes and how they behave are opposite each other. So an example would be, you believe lying is a sin, but you tell a lie. Now, we hold on to certain thoughts and mindsets, even if they're toxic, for several reasons. First, these mindsets give us ground to stand our hurt on. We put that flag that says, I've been hurt, and we just dig it right in there. Number two, we feel justified if we can rationalize why and what we're thinking. And three, we can easily feel entitled to our thoughts and emotions because of all the hurts that we've been through. But above everything, we must accept that God is the Lord of our lives. We do not have the option to pick and choose what we're going to keep and what we're going to get rid of. Every thought must be held up to the word of God. And if it is not true, according to the word of God, we must yield that thought. We must deconstruct it. We're not putting a band-aid over these toxic thoughts. We are pulling these painful thoughts and destructive mindsets out of the dark and breaking the ties that bind us to the past. It is the work of redesigning your story, honoring the past for what growth it has given you. When applying this new story to these toxic thoughts, it's going to change these thoughts. So in this yielding step, we're letting them go. We're laying them on the altar of our lives. We're giving them to God of heaven who has power and dominion over everything seen and unseen, who is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. And trust me, he's completely capable. So what is the point of all this mindset and thought life work besides eliminating these toxic thoughts that create illness in our bodies and minds? We develop resilience. Resilience means that we now have the ability to adapt to our stressors in a positive way. We're able to maintain our composure in the face of adversity. It's the ability to bounce back from difficult experiences. The psalmist said in 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. When we practice on a daily basis, taking our thoughts captive, restructuring them into positive and godly thoughts and mindsets, we will have the ability to face in a healthy way all that's coming at us each day. And in this day and age, there's a lot coming at us. So bottom line, if our minds are clouded with doubt, only thinking of ourselves and our own problems and don't have any room for the work God has set before us, we are going to miss out on the blessings that God has set before us to obtain. The devil has such a keen way of keeping us distracted. If we don't open our eyes and see the things that are possible with God, we won't be fulfilling our purpose, which is to glorify God. And what a better way to glorify him than through our own personal testimony. But we have to get out of our own ways. We can't let our thought life drag us down. Life is short. There are a lot of unsaved people out there in this world. We all have our own unique set of gifts and talents and knowledge and experiences to share with those around us, to bring them to Jesus. And that's our mission, isn't it? To make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all the commands Jesus gave us. And he sealed his commands with a promise. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We're not alone in our walk. We have Jesus. We can't get in the habit of trying to be like think like, act like, dress like, talk like, do life like the world. Be confident of who God made you to be. By taking your thoughts captive, giving them to God, he will renew your mind. You are a new creature in Christ, my sweet friend. Embrace it in all of your imperfections, all of your idiosyncrasies, all of your newness. I'm so glad that you joined me today. This was actually what I gave my speech on in my workshop back in June, and I think it's powerful. I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that our troubles begin in our mind. We are very self-centered creatures. We are all about us, and Satan knows that. And he keeps us bound in toxic thoughts. And God's word is so clear to say he's given us the answer to overcome those. And it's through his power. We do not have power in our own ability to fix our problems. 
and change our thoughts. It's through the word and the truth of God. If you're interested in more information, like I said, uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf is a great resource for this. I will, in my show notes, have a link to one of her YouTube videos, and I will have a link to the Daisy Method that I have been talking about. I thank you for your time today, and I hope that it has really touched something in your heart, that you're really feeling the power of what God is saying to you in this moment, how you can really change. If you have questions, please reach out. If you would like to work through some thoughts that you have and working through the DAISY method, if you need help with that, please reach out and we can um, schedule a coaching session and I can show you how that works. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I'm hoping that you received a word. Let me close with a passage of scripture. Rejoice in your confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. By doing this, sweet friend, you're going to find that you can take those thoughts captive and change that mindset and be anxious for nothing. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.